Yeah, I don't think, uh, I think that is Vladimir at the bottom, but I don't think he has a microphone yet. We'll circle back around. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Lots of fun topics. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, community time. Are there any, anybody on the call, not a normal attendee, or anybody have any community related topics they want to bring up? All right, good, moving forward. All right, SDK subgroup. Uh, we were supposed to have a meeting right before this. Uh, no topics really came up, so nothing really to bring up there. Uh, demo call. So we are making some progress on the demo. We um, hopefully will have a call right after this one for those of you who can make it to keep working through the sample workflows and stuff. Um, for those of you who are kind of waiting on the sideline until we get everything nailed down uh, with concrete examples for you to start coding to, um, not quite there yet. I feel like we are getting really close though, so keep an eye out. Uh, Obviously, if you're not on the Cloud Events demo Slack channel, uh, ping me and I'll invite you. Uh, that's where the uh, latest information will be discussed. Um, moving forward, uh, KubeCon EU, um, the agenda is out. Um, I don't think we've made any changes there uh, or made any progress relative to presentations for people to review. Um, the Practitioner Summit agenda is out. I apologize. I don't think I put the, I think I put a link. Go oh, with it. No, I didn't think I put it in our Slack channel. I'll try to find the link to the agenda. Um, the, um, the working group session that, or yeah, session that Kathy and I were gonna present that, that one was accepted. Um, so we, we do have something there to talk about um, our work here. And that will include a teaser uh, for the other sessions that we have during KubeCon itself. So we did get in there, so that's good. Um, KubeCon CN. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. This agenda doc here is actually not correct. That's actually for China. I apologize. So if just as an FYI, in case you did submit something for China, um, the agenda is out. Uh, our group did get one 35 minute session for cloud events and one 35 minute session for serverless. They didn't have enough room for uh, intro and deep dive. So we do at least have those. Um, and we'll in the future be talking about the planning sessions for those, uh, but I think it's a little far out, so we don't need to worry about it quite yet. Um, I have not put together the presentation yet for our yearly review for May 7th. Um, when that's available for you guys to review, I'll let you guys know. And with that, uh, we can jump into PRs, but did anybody um, have any topic at a higher level they want to bring up before we jump into PRs? All right, cool, moving forward then. All right, Tim opened up a PR. Now normally, because this was opened up, I believe just yesterday or so, uh, we would normally ask people to wait. However, this is just a very minor change to the primer doc and it's just a sample AWS cloud event. Oh, I'm sorry, cloud watch event. Um, so I thought maybe you guys could just take a quick look at this and approve it. It should be very, very obviously non-controversial since it's just what they do today. And this is just in that section of the primer where we say basically, you know, what's in the, what's in the community today and so people can see what's out there. Merge it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Christoph, yes. Quick, 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 quickly, um, I was also thinking oh. about maybe taking out one or two of the other, both the other AWS examples. I mean, because this is the one that actually matters. Would anybody be upset if uh, open? The other ones are some random SNS thing and so on. When it comes to events, though, the one I put in is the one that matters. Okay. Okay. Uh, Christoph, do you have your hand raised? Did you want to bring up something related to this? Yeah, just a question. Why is there a uh, white space in the resources? That seems a bit unusual to me. Oh, you mean right here? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that, is that a Copy typo? Paste okay. <laughs> do, do me a favor. Assuming we approve this, could you uh, update the PR? And with I'll that fix? Excellent. Actually, wait a minute. There's, there's more updates then. So is there any objection then to not only accepting this addition with the space fixed, but then also removing per Tim's request, I guess. So there's the SNS one, and I guess, the, oh, here's the other one. Okay, and then removing this one. So you wanna remove those two and then add that one, right? Correct. Okay. So, so you don't care about those, those scenarios? They're not really general purpose events. They're just bundles of data that people happen to send on a particular messaging service. Oh, okay. So they, this is just, so they don't depend on the channel. They're just 
Jason, that people threw in there. Yeah, I actually have no idea what they really are, to be honest. <laughs> okay, well, then, then it makes sense to drop them. Yeah, I mean, especially since you are the AWS rep, it makes sense yeah. that if you're asking them to be dropped, that they should be dropped. But okay. uh, Vlad, you had your hand raised for well, a second. Okay, I'll, I'll update the PR. Yeah, just quick, one last quick question for Vlad, since you raised your hand a second ago. Is there something you wanted to add to it, Vlad? Nope, my concern was his rest. Okay, cool. Okay, so to be perfectly clear, if we approve this, uh, Tim will remove the space here and we'll remove SNS and the Kinesis one. Any questions on that? Okay, any objection to approving it? Cool, thank you. Just editorially, I might ask people to observe the uh, astonishing similarity between the one that I put in and the cloud events structure. Astoundingly, yes. Um, okay, let's save the space and remove the other AWS examples. Cool. Thank you, Tim, for that. Appreciate it. All right, this one. Uh, I think I may have opened this two days ago. Oh, 22 hours ago, so a little over a day. Okay, so this one... While it is new, it is very, very straightforward. Uh, basically, there are a couple of editorial things that uh, Clemens did not get a chance to pick up before we approved his subject PR. Um, you can see here it's just changing stars to dashes, um, just for consistency with the rest of the doc. And I believe someone added a comment that Clemens forgot to pick up, which is just add the phrase, if present, it must be a non-empty string. So it's adding if present, and that's mainly just to be consistent with the rest of the spec. Uh, more stars to dashes, fixing some blanks at the end of lines here, and then the rest is stars to dashes and end of blanks. Hopefully you guys are okay with these strictly editorial changes. I am certainly thankful. Yep. Oh, one last other thing. Subject attribute, I, I put uh, backticks around subject, that way it stands out as not an English word, but rather an attribute name. Right. Okay. Any questions or concerns about this one? Strictly editorial nature. Okay, any objection to approving? Cool, thank you guys very much. All right, Christoph, doo -doo -doo -doo, I believe this is an extension, hold on. Oh, yeah, funny. this is an, ex we discussed this, I don't know, <clears throat> some time ago. Um, yeah, hold on. I'm, sorry, I'm waiting for Zoom to get out of the way, then I can click on it. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, so it's been open. I, I guess most people have already seen it, uh, but the idea is to implement the claim check pattern for the data attributes. So this is only for the data attribute and not uh, multiple references. Um, yeah, so this describes how you can put this uh, URL or URI reference instead or in addition to the data attribute there. And then a middleware can decide that they uh, that it drops the data or replaces the data with a data ref. Right. Um, I, I believe the text of this is pretty much the same as what you had before when you had the PR as um, adding it to the main spec. Is that is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. And keep in mind, as you guys think about this one, this is an extension, so the bar is definitely lower than a, a, spec, at, a spec change. Any discussions on this one? Okay, really, nothing? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure how to interpret that. Hmm. Okay, Jim, you're up. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I I've been mentally out of it for a week or so being sick. Um, the only comment I, I have uh, around this, maybe for Christoph, is that um, it, it's a little bit odd that the middleware, I think, can, we're giving the, the guidance that the middleware or intermediary can sort of drop the data and then pass references to it. And I, I, sort, of, I, I sort of wonder whether that's really an end-to-end um, contract between the emitter and the eventual subscriber um, because there's no guarantees that a subscriber will have the ability to resolve a reference I think I, I just I think it's there's a possibility that you set a, a, a dangerous model 
by doing that. The, the publisher could, could generate inline data, but then the subscriber receives a reference and it's not able to dereference it. I know well, that's basically a problem of moving it from the main spec into an extension. Um, well, yeah. Okay. You're right. Is that just a, an artifact of the PR itself, or does that are you suggesting that requires a change? No, I'm, um, what I um, now it is an extension, so there is no guarantee that a subscriber implements this actually. If we would put it into the main spec, it would be sort of every subscriber was will be you know should have an understanding of this field versus now it is well optional. So it is uh, if you are a middleware, you cannot know if your subscribers will support this data ref attribute or not. But anyway, it is um, in, in the sense that it has been built, it is not always guaranteed that the every uh, subscriber can necessarily follow this. So if you have the case um, where you use the claim check pattern to make sure that no one reads the data who shouldn't, in this case, only the subscribers that have a pre-shared secret can read it anyway. So yeah, it is sort of, um, if we build it in, then it means that a someone has to build the chain, right? Someone has to subscribe the middleware to the publisher and then the last subscriber to the middleware. And at this point, someone has to understand that the middleware can then add the data attribute. Yeah, I'm not sure how you can fix that. Yeah, you yeah, don't. Yeah, you have to kind of assume that the um, the producer or the, I'm sorry, the receiver knows about the extension. But that's the the same is true for things like tracing, right? Where you uh, where we have an extension defined, and uh, if uh, the receiver doesn't know about tracing, doesn't care, then that's what it is. Yeah, I guess the the difference here though is. In this particular case, it's very possible that you will not include the data attribute. And so the receiver who doesn't know about this attribute will look at the data attribute not being there and say, oh, it's just an empty event. Right? It's a <laughs> I think the, what I, the, the um, background of this is we have this size limitation. So if you are a middleware and someone sends you, I don't know, a one megabyte data attribute, and then you try to forward it onto another different protocol where you uh, are restricted to a smaller size, let's say 64 kilobytes, then either you just drop the event, which is maybe not so good, or you use this claim check pattern so that the consumer then at least gets the event and then can get the data uh, through the data ref. That's the idea or one of the ideas. Yep. Yeah. I definitely understand the usefulness of it. I just kind of wish there was a must understand header flag that we had in soap so you can force the guy to make sure you understand the exception. Oh God. I know, I th but I had to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> there were some useful things in soap. Yes, there were. Um, okay, any other questions or comments on this? Jim, your hand, I can't tell if your hand is up or down or what. Yeah, I just got trigger finger, I think. Um, <laughs> I, I, the other one, and it was probably a rather dismissive comment I made on on Christoph's original PR was the fact that whether there was some way to address this using um, the the data content type um, methodology to sort of say, well, the data is not actual data; it's a reference to data. Um, I that I'm not sure if you guys discussed that when I was off last week, but. Uh, that was the only other sort of comment I'd had on this issue. No, I don't believe we did discuss that because I think actually, Christoph, you may have been off last week as well. Um, I think that, I think Clemens, you may have made a similar comment in the past as well. Um, I didn't, I miss, missed that last comment. Oh, Jim was just saying that it's possible to put the reference to the, to the claim check stuff um, or a reference to the data uh, inside the data element itself, as opposed to inside a separate element. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's, uh, um, 
for me, that's the preferred solution to keep the event to, to keep the event small, and then the event might actually turn might actually point at um, different kinds of of data elements elements you eventually want to go and pull. And you probably also want to go and describe the be a little bit more descriptive about the, the data that you are referring to. Um, and that's all something that's you know, well housed, I think, in the, in the data. The other, the other challenge that exists in making this a generic mechanism is obviously also that whoever is the receiver of the, of the event uh, needs to have um, access and, and visibility to the uh, um, to whoever is the publisher or where the publisher stored that data, and that's not always given. Okay. So, um, how do people feel about this going forward? Like I said, it, it is an extension, so it doesn't have to be uh, as high a bar as things of the spec. And one of the nice things about it being an extension is we can get to see we get get to, we get to see what kind of a uh, uptake there is in the community for this versus some other solution that people may have? I, I don't have a problem with this going in as, a, as an extension. I, I sort of, I, I, maybe I have more of a problem if middleware providers start randomly applying those extensions, you know, when I'm not expecting it to happen. Um, so if it's an end-to-end -end contract between the original event emitter and and its trusted subscribers then you know i think that's where extensions sort of work yeah mm -hmm. but but the middleware should just be pass you know should just pass on so i i i don't think this i don't i i guess i'm not really advocating for this to be a solve for the message size problem which i i think is is something that christoph had had raised from a middleware perspective. I'm not sure I understand what you said. That You said you don't see this as solving the size problem? Well, no, but it does. Um, if I'm a publisher and I want to send a big message, if I want to store it somewhere and send a reference, I would absolutely use this mechanism. Yeah. Right. Um, what I, I think is a little bit dangerous is if a piece of uh, provider middleware suddenly decides that it's received a message that it wants to pass around via reference and then expect all of its consumers to know about this extension and then you know apply it that's really what i'm driving at oh but but, uh, but that goes back to your other case of you have to have end-to-end -end yes. agreement and uh, even if it's one-to-end -end environment yeah yeah Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, any objection to adopting this? Actually, hold on a minute. Let me just check one thing here. I'm not hearing any objections, so that's all good, but I think there actually may be a process. I don't wanna <laughs> violate that process because I think extensions might require Where is it? Maybe it's the extension. Is it the extension doc itself? Um, didn't we have a rule that said we have yeah, to. The last have, paragraph. Where is it? Uh, at least two voting members state their support for its inclusion. Okay. So do we have at least two voting members? Voting members as defined by something. Uh, two voting members saying that they that they support this thing being added. Um, Christoph, you're a voting member, right? I wasn't there last time. I'm not. <laughs> Maybe I'm actually out of it at this point. Oh, hold on. Do, 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 do. But uh, do, do. yeah. Quickly. I think there's a bit of a process issue if you can vote for your own work. Not well, well, nothing, nothing well, like the, the thing is, um, we actually discussed that and we actually did allow it exactly because if you don't allow it, then uh, if, if a voting member wants to get their thing in, they have to get up, they, they can play a game by getting a proxy. 
to, to vote for it. And it, it's, it just avoids a whole bunch of game playing. Say, look, the feature is a feature, regardless of who mentioned it, even if it's the person who mentioned it, they, they should be able to say, yes, I want it. It just, it, it actually avoids game playing instead of adds game playing. So, okay. Yeah. So hold on a second. Let me just double check here. I apologize. My machine is getting kind of slow. All right. So here are the voting members. Christoph, you are actually a voting member. So you can vote for your own thing. So you do. Uh, anybody else want to raise their hand as the second voting member? Yes, I will. Jim. Okay, cool. All right. Then I'll ask, formally ask the question, is there any objection to approving this? All right, cool. Thank you, guys. So, Jem, Christoph, um, as voting members. I'll clean that up later. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Christoph, for the work you put on that. I know it was, took a while, but thank you. All right. Um, Scott is not on the call. Um, do you guys want to wait until he's on the call to discuss this quoting issue? Actually, neither Scott or Adam are on the call. Or would you guys like to discuss it now? I'm inclined to wait until at least one of those guys are on the call, but it's, it's up to you guys if you think we can discuss it without them. We should wait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any objection to waiting? Okay. Unfortunately, um, okay. So we had this whole issue about uh, what is going to be used for uniqueness for messages? Because right now the spec says source and ID together. Well, actually, well, it actually doesn't technically say that. I think the spec technically says for every producer, the ID must be unique for every single event. You can imply from that, that means ID plus source. And I believe um, uh, somebody, who was it? Somebody opened up a PR to actually clarify that to say um, that it's actually source plus ID. It could be used for dedupe and stuff like that, and that's fine. But then there were some issues raised about whether type should be included in there. And that was actually raised by Scott, um, I think is the main proponent of that. Although I think there may be one or two other people that may have kind of raised their hand and said, yeah, that makes sense. Um, for, for the people on the calls, I don't think we can resolve this today without at least Scott, since he has, this, I think, a strong opinion on this. But for people on the call, What's the general sense for, from you guys? Do you want to keep it as it is today where kind of ID alone is a unique factor or I guess ID plus source or the unique, is the uniqueness sort of tuple for an event to determine uniqueness or do you guys think we need to include type in there? So um, my sense is that the source identifies who's raising the event and then the ID is it, whatever number space or ID space, it, the source wants to assign to the event, and that's sufficient. That that creates sufficient uniqueness. I, I you could include the type, but I don't know what that adds. Because then you would, in fact, you would scope the the ID to the source and type first, and then create an an, an ID space kind of for source and type, and that makes that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jim, I think your hand might have been next. No, sorry, that was accidentally raised, uh, but oh. I would agree with Clemens. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Tim, your hand's up. Yeah, just uh, just relating experience in our event processing, the idea is just the ID. Everybody uses U UUIDs, which is plenty of bits, and that's a nice simplifying assumption. You don't have to do any multi-part keys or anything like that. Yeah, okay. So my only comment with that, is um, something that we've seen in the past is that, uh, and obviously outside the context of cloud events, um, we can't guarantee that our clients are going to generate globally unique IDs. Yeah, so we always have to pair it with a client ID to actually, you know, create a global unique space. Um, that that would be my only comment. Otherwise, you have to enforce that that ID is a GUID or whatever, which I don't think we do today. Okay, uh, Christoph, your hands up. I made this comment on a previous call. Um, my issue is that for the type, we say this should be 
uh, should start with a reverse uh, DNS. So we kind of try to make the type globally unique. For the um, source, we don't require such a thing. So for a source, I could just say this is slash user, right? And then there could be like a lot of people who say slash user is a valid for me. Or it could be uh, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, anyone could have that like slash user is pretty generic. Um, so we could also think about saying, okay, this source should also, you should try to make this source globally unique, then my um, concern kind of goes away. But if we don't do that, then I think type is nice in there because it contains the reverse DNS and sort of makes sure that it's then globally unique. Yeah, but that's that's not that's not the reason why you why you have the 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 uh, the type unique. It's like that's a, that might be a nice element that you can use for unique. So, but but it's not guaranteed to be unique. And certainly not unique for the source because it really like if I, if you have the Microsoft blog dot created event, how does that? That's a universal thing that might be used all over the place. How how does that help you with the uniqueness for you in the individual event instance? No, no. I mean, you always have have to have the ID in there, of course. I didn't want to take the ID out. Yeah, but it's it's. I think the ID is the the ID is the thing that that varies. And that's being that's being generated um, by some you know relative to some counter that you keep um, if you don't use a GUID, and then and then you have a relative you have a source that's identified and whether that source now sprinkles that that um, that number space with another unique identifier which is unique but then you know is not doesn't constrain the number space. What does that help? But the point is that we are like we are two completely separate uh, producers. We could choose the same uh, number space and we could choose the same source. No, you, us. you shouldn't be able to because the source is a URI and we're, we're allowing it to be, to, be a, to be a URI reference, that's true, but basically it's a URI. It should uniquely identify that, 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 um, um, the source. I mean, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Then we should go in and we should tell the people, don't use your eye reference, use a full your eye to make sure that it is globally unique. And well, if you have something like slash users, it's a very bad idea because that's probably going to clash. So if you're GitHub, use github.com slash users. And if you're Twitter, use twitter.com slash users. Then we should be more explicit in the spec about this. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, so, so my hand's up. I um, <clears throat> I, I think I agree with you, and I think I, I think it makes a whole lot of sense to provide additional guidance in the spec around source. Um, I, I wouldn't want to go so far as to make it a must, and I don't think you were suggesting that. I think you were suggesting some guidance with the should kind of a stuff and say, you know, the, the, the value of source should be globally unique, um, but, you know, there may be some environments where you just want to do slash user, and that's perfectly fine for your environment. But yeah, I, I think additional guidance there does make a whole lot of sense from my perspective. Um, and I just want to say, I, I, I agree with what Clement said. I, I, I don't see what type adds in terms of uniqueness. And in fact, I think if you actually did add type in there, we then have to explain what it means for the same source to have two events with the same ID, because then obviously ID means something beyond just some random number. Um, right. What does it mean? It implies some, at least it implied to me some sort of correlation between these two events. And we then have to define what that correlation means. And I don't, I didn't think we wanted to head down that path. And that's, that's why I'm, I'm kind of against type being in there as well. But, okay. So oh, go, go ahead, go ahead, Kathy. Oh, yeah. I just want to add, yeah, I think I also agree, you know, um, it's a source plus ID that, you know, uniquely identify, you know, the, that event um, because I, it, it you know, it's easy to scope that uniqueness of the ID within a source, but it's not easy to scope, you know, an ID globally because there are so many different event sources. It's hard to coordinate, you know, all the event sources. And adding type, I do not, I think that adds more complication. All right, cool. thank you. So let me ask this, is there anybody on the call who thinks that adding type would be a good idea? Okay, um, <clears throat> so in that case, we'll do this. I'll, 
I'll, I'll talk to Scott offline and, and see how he feels about this. Um, but obviously, I don't want to resolve this without him on the call, since I think he has some strong feelings about it. And maybe he can convince everybody that, that type action does make sense. But like I said, I just want to get a sense for the, the, the mood of the room. So thank you, guys. I think I got that. OK. Um, now, uh, another one from Scott. So unfortunately, we can't, uh, we, we, I guess if we ever really agreed with this, we could, we could resolve it if we wanted. But basically, Scott wants to change the current version of the spec to 0 03. Um, I actually don't think this, I, I know, I, I, moderator, I probably shouldn't jump in here, but I do want to jump in <laughs> anyway. I actually think this is a bad idea because we aren't at 0 03 yet. And I think that would actually cause more confusion for people. Um, what I, what I would rather suggest is if you want to change it to something, put it as like 0.3.alpha or release candidate or something like that to make it clear that this isn't really 0 0.3, it's a pre-0.3 type of thing. But I wanted to get a sense from the room of what you guys thought about something like that um, before I actually made a formal proposal to Scott to modify his PR to do that. So Doug, I, I had a conversation with Scott about this and mm -hmm. I somewhat agreed with him going forward with this PR. Okay. Uh, the, the issue was that I believe it was batch support had, had 0 0.2 hard coded in it, but that wasn't, that wouldn't be supported in 0 0.2. Therefore mm -hmm. it was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. So ha having something other than 0 0.2 to reflect new changes that we've been adding prior to a release would be good. Yeah, we need, we need that for coding, really. Like yeah. we, need to have, we need to have a string that is not 0 0.2, and it could be 0 0.2 bis <laughs> um, or 0 0.3 alpha, I don't care, but we need to have a different string. Yeah, I, I, I guess it wasn't clear. I definitely agree with changing it to something. I just don't want it to be 0 0.3, because I think that's just as bad and, and misleading for people. Um, so I've, I've heard 0 dot, what, what <laughs> What did you say, Clint? Zero point two abyss. Zero point two abyss. That was a bit of a joke. Okay. Um, okay. It was ITO ITU joke. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, so maybe we should. I mean, do you guys? So what is there? A, is there a string that people would like to put in there? I mean, I think in the past someone even suggested putting the word master in there or something like that to represent. You know, it's it's the master branch, and that's clearly not a real semver thing. Um, I prefer a string, like master, latest, whatever. It's clear that hey, this is really, really not a version. Okay. Latest is not bad. My only concern with latest is if you think about the Docker world, latest means of all the versions out there, this is the latest one that was built. And I wouldn't want someone to think that this is the latest version of the spec, meaning at this point in time, it, it, latest is, a, is an alias for zero two. Yeah, I agree. Latest is a good idea. <laughs> that's my only concern. I, I do like master, though, because I think that's very clear for anybody who's geeky enough to actually go find it in GitHub. Mark, do you have a sense of what, I mean, what, what do you, what's your take on something like master or some other string that you might have discussed with Scott? No, we, we, we just discussed whether it should be 0 0.3 to reflect uh, the new changes that have come in. You know, zero dot x dot master. That works. Anybody else have an opinion? Okay, I've heard two different proposals: master zero dot x dot master. Anybody want to voice an opinion for one way or the other? I think I I think that we need to separate out. Where do we want to say what is the latest version, which would be a 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 versus the examples that should just be agnostic with respect to a specific version, except when we're uh, doing a release that has specific features that are implemented in that version. So, um... Interesting. So are you, <clears throat> are you actually suggesting that the examples don't actually put a real version number, but the spec itself does have a version number? Yes, that's what I'm implying. Because as we release the spec, we want to be able to say, here's, 
here's the string that you, you should be seeing in to reflect that version. But the but the the the, the all of the other examples don't necessarily need that. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's going to cause confusion for people to say, well, why do some examples have a number and some don't? So let, let, okay, let's take this one well, step at a time, right? We, I think I, I'm not hearing anybody disagree that we should probably change the master branch version from 0 0.2 to something, okay? So I've heard two proposals, master 0.x.master. Somebody needs to speak up and voice an opinion one way or the other. Otherwise, I'm going to start picking on people. Current version dot master seems good. Uh, actually, okay, let me get some clarity. Mark, when you said X, did you actually mean the letter X or the current version dot master? I meant, I meant the, the letter X, not, not the numeric current. Okay. Eric, do you feel, I think that was Eric, right? Do you feel strongly about I that would prefer aspect? that it, yeah, I, I, well, I, not terribly strongly. I, I think we could spend too much time on this, but I, I uh, would prefer a number that relates to the base that's being worked on or the version that's being worked towards on master. That would I, then, okay. Well, th that would then imply something like, in today's state of things, it would be 0 0.3 dot some word that implies not ready yet, right? Like alpha, beta, working document or something like that, right? Is that that's what you're suggesting, right, Eric? Correct. Right. What about 0 0.3 dot WIP for work in progress? Or did anybody have any other suggestions for what that word might be? All right, well, I guess I should have. Mark, would you be okay with heading that direction? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. I, either, any of these are gonna solve the problem. I know, I'm just trying to get it to an answer. <laughs> so I'm hearing 0 0.3 dot something. Somebody think of a word, quick. Okay, let me do this. You guys are too quiet sometimes, I swear. Um, what about work in progress, WIP? Or would you prefer master? That way it, people don't have to guess what WIP means. Work in progress is nicer than master, in my opinion. Okay, less geeky, okay. So we have a vote for WIP. I'm gonna pick on people here. Mark, what do you think? Well, I've been commenting. Uh, <laughs> sure, I don't care. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pick on somebody I don't I, have to pick on. You better watch out. I'm going to start agreeing with Clemens and just tell you to put this in there. <laughs> okay. God, no. Okay. Ginger, I'm going to pick it on you. What do you think? 0.3.wip. Yes or no? I prefer WIP over master. Okay. Okay. Since you guys are going to be quiet, I'm going to put a formal proposal out there. Is there any objection to asking Scott to change his PR to be 0.3.wip? All right, that was exciting, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to Scott, thank you. All right, um, this one, do, 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 do. Kathy, you are still on the call, right? No, Kathy, you left. Oh. I was going to ask her, never mind, since she was the uh, lone holdout on this one, we, we can't ask her about that. Okay, um, let me see if there's anything, we're at the end of the normal PR list, so hold on a minute, let's see if there's anything we could talk about. No, I think everything's up for discussion, we've already covered. I guess one thing, Clemens, your size PR was approved, but I think there were some edits you needed to make Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Because we were actually waiting for Rachel to do some things. There was still some possible open discussions around this one. I think you weren't on the call that day. Um, but there were some outstanding things that Rachel wanted to, to do. Um, but in yes, the meantime, 
Yeah, she wanted to go and propose something, right? Yeah, but if you if you can at least rebase the PR so that it's ready to go, if yes, if that thing doesn't turn into anything, then we're ready to go. Cool. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Okay. Um, because I'll I'll disappear for two weeks. Really? You're going on vacation again? I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you mean again? Well, it seems like it was just like yesterday you were on vacation or something. I don't know. I, I apologize to everybody that I'm in Germany. Uh, Work-life balance, Doug. I know, I know. It. I, don't, I don't know what that concept means. So they, I don't know. Okay, anyway. Uh, I think we're technically at the end of the agenda, but are there any other topics people would like to bring up? Um, so related to Clement's size PR, oh, yes. I kind of, okay, I kind of gave up on the, the having one size per uh, transport. So we're going to have different sizes now, but I still think we discussed this where it should be a limit or a guarantee. And I think we already discussed this. So I would be, I still think we should make this not a constraint, but a guaranteed size. And that's what we already discussed on January 17, as I commented there, um, which was quite some time ago. But I would okay. still like to see that change. Hold on, uh, which change? The, the, the first comment, the first um, comment. from me here. Um. So we already discussed this, like, I guess everybody forgot it by now. Well, we discussed whether we should want to have a size constraint as is in this PR or a size guarantee. And then we decided we want to have a size guarantee, which is also, I changed that in my initial PR. Yeah. So we can have all that discussion again, or we can say we already discussed it and we decided for a guarantee, which way you like. I'm going to claim ignorance on this. Um, so help me out here. What specific change would you like to see in this PR based upon that discussion? The, dis uh, the change is that instead of saying there is a limit of 64 kilobytes, it should say there is a minimum gar guaranteed size of 64 kilobytes. So for example, this should not exceed 64 would turn into um, Oh wait, no, this, this one is okay. I think this. Um, and then, uh, sorry. The, 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 uh, and there's down here. Not the last. Well, there, yeah. I think there was another line that I commented on, but it should generally, it shouldn't be named a constraint. The, uh, it should be. So if you know that, I don't know, you're, your whole chain supports one megabyte, then you should be in compliance with the spec if you send out a something that's one megabyte. But you are, because there's no must rule. Yeah, that's what I was kind of at the state of my PR as well, but still it's like a, I think, oh, how would I say this? So that you don't feel bad about yourself because you're violating a should, you should still, should be in compliance with all the shoulds, right? Or so I have, well, right? Two, uh, there's two. One is you shouldn't be put, putting you you shouldn't be putting more than 64k k on the wire, and then the other one is as a consumer, um, your limits should not be less than 64k. So effectively, um, one is be careful. Don't put anything more than 64k. But on the other side is. Um, you should be, you, if you're putting a limit on this, that should not be less than 64K. So if someone sh get, shows up at 64K, you should be taking that. But, but I leave, I leave, there's a fact, those two shoulds are, are one is uh, be careful about how much you post and the other one is be lenient about how much you take. Yeah, but I think what we discussed is that the, actually the, the 304 line, it should be turned around in saying like it basically that shouldn't be there. Like you can still post events that are larger. Yeah, well, what you can. You, but you can. There's nothing that forbids you to put a megabyte on the on the wire. It's just you're you're running against the should not rule, but that's okay. It's not recommended that you do that. Well, okay. I for me it will I would feel better if it's not a should. Uh, 
but what it's okay. It Whatever. Be? Like we discussed it before, and we we I had specifically the name constraint in there, and the working group said to me, "Don't use constraint. Use guarantee." Yeah. Like I, need, okay, I don't care. To, I mean, we we need to have find some language that is is basically limiting what the what the or informing the implementations, and for that we have some phrases that. Uh, we're using may, should, must, etc., and so that's that's what's that's what's being used here. Anything that's lesser, um, I, I don't know what else to put here. So, <clears throat> Christoph, are are you looking for a must on line three hundred four? No, I'm not looking for a must. What 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 specific change would you like to see then? I'm I'm still a little confused. I apologize. So it shouldn't be named a constraint. It should be named a minimum guaranteed size. You mean up here on line yes. 292? Okay. And then it shouldn't say, you should not publish an event that exceeds that, but you should be aware that if you publish something above that, consumers may, may reject this. So if you do that, you're on your own, but it's not like you're completely fine. If you are aware that everyone who, all your consumers will accept like 10 megabytes, then feel free to send 10 megabytes. Okay, so I think what you're saying is you'd like to change the title and you'd like this line to be augmented, <clears throat> excuse me, to say uh, post events should not exceed 64K and receivers may reject messages that, ex that they consider too big or, or greater than 64K? No, that's already in a paragraph below. Okay, then, then I'm, I'm, confused, I'm still confused as to what you, the specific text you'd like to see on line 304. Well, I can make a proposal, but it, I think we can also look at my PR, which I changed based on the feedback that I got from the group. So, so we voted on this one, and I'll do the editorial changes, and you can go and then make an amendment to the PR. Well, well. To be fair, we were voting on a direction before, and then we, we agreed that once we got the direction, <clears throat> we then would do editorial things. So, so Christoph, our, well, there's two stages here. One, Clemens, I think if you can make the editorial changes that you agree with, that have been suggested already, because I think most mm -hmm. of them are strictly editorial, you can do those. Christoph, if you could put a comment on this PR with the exact text that you'd like to see, so that Clemens and the rest of the group can can look at it, I think that'd be helpful. Okay. Okay. So I think the the um, I think the way that I did it in my my PR is that I didn't talk about the uh, the uh, size as itself, but I just said like sixty four kilobytes is what every consumer should accept, and not no published event should be above it. Okay. I, I, from my <clears throat> from my way of looking at it, I I think that's similar to what's already being said, but put the exact words that you'd like to see in there. So Clemens can look at it and see if it actually changes what his intent was, and then we can have a discussion. I just, for me personally, without seeing the, the, the exact text you'd like to see, it's, a, it's hard for me to follow the exact set of changes to know whether I would agree or disagree. Yeah, I, I think in terms of implementation, it is not a big change, but it was more like we looked at all the sizes we had we saw there are message queues who go up into several megabytes and we want to, we didn't want to exclude those. We didn't want to set a low limit and saying, we know you run on a, a message queue that supports 60, uh, one megabyte and you are forced to go with 64 kilobytes more or less. We want to say it's completely fine if you go above that. Well, you have to be aware that maybe you're not, you will not be fine. Um, not be fine if you switch to different transports, which we now say anyway, because once we switch to the transport layer, the whole 64 kilobyte is only a wire format, so you don't know what will happen anyway. Right. Okay, but I, I do think the next steps here is just, if you could propose some exact text for people to consider, I think that'd be the best way forward. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, any other topics people wanna to bring up or anything that seems like I missed? Okay, in that case, before you guys start vanishing, hold on a sec, last minute uh, attendance check. Uh, Fabio, you there? 
Yeah, I see you there making edits. Uh, Jim, I know you're there. Um, Kathy was there. I heard of her. Vladimir, are you there? I'm here. Excellent. Erica, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, there, there's a name on there I didn't, men I didn't see before. Mangel Falcon, are you there? Or actually, they seem to have dropped. Uh, Frederick, are you there? I'm here. Excellent. Anybody else that I may have missed? All right, cool. Thank you guys very much. And we'll, oh, I should point out, we have a uh, Cloud Event demo call in seven minutes, same Slack channel or same Zoom channel. Um, if you want to join that discussion, you hang on or dial back in in seven minutes. Otherwise, everybody else is free to go. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk next week. Thanks, Doug. Okay, bye, guys. Thanks, Doug. Thanks.